I'm Trying to Love Rocks by Bethany Barton. This is a book about geology, and it all starts with like loving rocks, like that rock over there. Check it out. So rock-like, hard, doesn't move. Hmm, it turns out rocks don't really do much. Maybe we should poke it. It's still not doing anything. Well, that didn't work. Maybe the next book will be better. The end. Wait, no. What are you doing? I'm ending the book. It was about geology, but it turns out rocks are super boring. So I'm just going to make a different book about something exciting, like volcanoes, or diamonds, or fossils. Literally everything you just listed is a part of geology. No way. Really, geology is more than just staring at rocks. Geology is the study of what Earth is made of, its history, and the processes the Earth goes, uh, does all on its own. Crust, mantle outer core, inner core. The relatively thin plates of solid rock we live on are the crust, mostly solid rock called peridite, with some areas of hot melty rock is the mantle. Liquid super hot rock iron and nickel is in the outer core and solid super hot iron and nickel around 6,000 degrees Celsius. That's under too much pressure to melt, inner core. Uh, how do you know all this stuff? Are you like the president of the geology club or something? Yep, sure am. Rock club president. Wow, so you can make me love rocks? I can try. Check this out. They might not look like they're doing much, but all rocks on earth are constantly and super slowly changing with the help of weathering, pressure, and heat. Magma is rock that gets so hot that it melts. When it's underground, we call it magma. I thought that was lava. Once it hits the surface, we call it lava. Okay, fiery liquid rock is easy to love. But what about all the boring rocks I see every day? Yawn. But those rocks all have different stories to tell. Wait, rocks can talk? Why didn't you tell me? Hello, rocks. Nice to meet you. What are your names? They're not talking. That's not what I meant, although geologists do give names to different kinds of rocks. Pumice or igneous, sandstone or sedimentary, marble or metamorphic. They also classify the rocks into three types based on how they're formed. Over many, many years, the earth breaks down and changes each type of rock into a new and different rock. We call this the rock cycle. So heat and pressure, melting heat to magma, cooling it down, igneous rock is weathering and erosion makes it sediment, and com uh, compaction and sedimentation makes sedentary, but it can weather and erode back into sediment. Heat and pressure can make it into metamorphic, and if it uh, melting heat makes it into magma. The word igneous means fiery because igneous rocks are formed when hot melted rock cools. Either underground, magma becomes intrusive rock like this granite. Or because of a volcanic eruption, lava becomes extrusive rock like this obsidian. Most of the Earth's crust is igneous rock. That's a lot of lava. Sedimentary rock is made up of, wait for it, sediment. Weathering from wind and sand and water breaks up rock into tiny pieces. Erosion moves the sediment until it settles into layers. Layers or strata build up over time and become tightly pressed together. We call that compaction. Then comes the sediment, uh, sedimentation. That's where dissolved minerals fill into the cracks and glue all the pieces together. Sedimentary rocks sometimes preserve plants and animal remains within their layers. When minerals replace that organic material, we get fossils. The Grand Canyon is a great example of sedimentary rocks that formed over millions of years. Metamorphic rocks is rock that changes from extreme heat or pressure. Limestone becomes marble, kind of like kernels 
how kernels become popcorn, and you think that's impressive. Either minerals or gemstones. Ooh, so sparkly. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks and gemstones. Some minerals we use every day, like copper, salt, or iron. Other minerals get polished into fancy gemstones. Many gemstones are created when minerals collect inside and between rocks, usually with the help of water. Diamonds are created when carbon is put under extreme pressure. So all I have to do is squish a rock to get diamonds. Let's make some diamonds. Uh, it's still just a rock. You can't just squish any rock into a diamond. It has to be carbon, and it needs a lot more pressure. Something closer to the weight of 60 elephants. Where am I going to find 60 elephants? That's a great question. You'd make a good scientist. I would, but I don't know this stuff. Science isn't about having the answers. It's about asking questions. Geologists get to ask lots of questions on our home, the earth. Why do we have earthquakes? How did the mountains get here? What will I find if I dig a hole here? Where did this island come from? Tectonic plates are huge slabs of rock within the Earth's crust. They can shift and sometimes collide, which is how the Himalayan, uh, Himalayan mountains were formed. We feel earthquakes when tectonic plates move suddenly along a fault or break. Geologists help find oil and water within the layers of the Earth's strata. Many islands are formed when lava underground water volcanoes cool and builds up enough to create new land. Even the rocks in your own backyard can answer questions and act, uh, act like time machines, showing you what the Earth looked like thousands or even millions of years ago. Time machines? Those aren't boring at all. Wait, does that mean I love rocks now? Welcome to the club.